This video was a request from a concerned subscriber. On Friday, February 19th, 2019, around 5.30 in the morning, the Chavez family was awakened by their dogs barking and the sound of a cat screaming. When they went to see what was going on, they found their dogs near Mrs. Brenda Hamilton, who was lying in a drainage ditch up to her shoulders in water, but no cat was seen. Mr. Chavez picked her up from the drainage ditch while his wife asked for help from another neighbor. That neighbor then called 911. When the EMS arrived, they found Mrs. Hamilton suffering from horrific injuries to both arms, both legs, and her scalp, and she was partially consumed. And at first, it was thought that a bear was responsible. So traps and wildlife cameras were set up, but no bear was seen. There was also a great deal of blood found on the road that led investigators to the ditch where Mrs. Hamilton was originally found. And she was transported to the hospital where she was in intensive care and she died two days later. There weren't any eyewitnesses because of the time frame. It was February and around 5.15 to 5.30, you know, it's still dark outside. And she was out at that time because she took a walk every morning as part of her routine. Deputies found a rodent, a swamp rat, close to where the attack began, and it had just been killed and injuries to it appeared to have been afflicted by another animal. And the two dogs found near Mrs. Hamilton were examined about an hour after the attack by deputies and animal control officers. They didn't display any signs of aggression towards deputies. They weren't wet and there was no visible sign of mud or blood on either dog. Now, Mrs. Brenda Hamilton was a wife and a mother, and she had been a teacher for 51 years, and she was kind-hearted, sweet, and a pillar of the community. And her funeral was standing room only inside, and close to a thousand vehicles were parked in the area so that people could attend. And she worked at a Christian academy since 1968, and she taught high school English. And she graduated from East Carolina University. The town of Pantego is on the coast of North Carolina, and it has a population under 200 people. Most of the evidence in this case was lost in the water, according to authorities. And on the day of the attack, wildlife took several items of evidence to the forensics lab at Western Carolina University to be tested. And the Beaufort County Commission also put together a committee in search of definitive answers. The community was very concerned, understandably, because they didn't know what animal was responsible. During her walks, it was common for dogs in the area, including the two dogs found near her, to follow along with her. And her husband said that none of the dogs ever bothered her or even displayed any aggression towards her. A few hours after the attack, both of the dogs were tested. They tested positive for trace amounts of human blood on their paws and in their mouth. They were quarantined for 10 days and then released back to their owner. Investigators found trace amounts of bone fragments in one stool sample taken from the dogs and possible human hair in another. And an investigator with the sheriff's office said the dog's owners and the neighbors familiar with the dogs all testified before the committee. And after a review of the evidence and the testimony, the committee did not find the dogs to be dangerous. And samples from a flashlight that she had with her didn't match any of the known dogs. Beaufort County has bears, alligators, and coyotes, but preliminary DNA testing done by a North Carolina wildlife biologist eliminated any wild animals indigenous to the area. No DNA from bears, coyotes, or red wolves was detected during the testing, and K9 in the world of DNA covers everything from a chihuahua to a gray wolf. And officials believed that Mrs. Hamilton was attacked by a domestic animal because canine DNA was found on her clothing and her shoes. But the DNA testing didn't differentiate between domestic dogs and wild dogs like wolves or coyotes. There was a total of 33 items tested at the Western Carolina University lab and only two yielded nuclear DNA. Nuclear DNA contains material from both the mother and the father and it can be used to identify a specific animal. Mitochondrial DNA only contains genetic material from the mother, and it can be used to identify an animal species. None of the other items that were tested yielded DNA results because of the water that Mrs. Hamilton was found in. 
a biology and forensic science instructor, said that she found two distinct canine matches. Through DNA, she knew that the mother of the animal was a dog, but she couldn't say what the father was. There is a possibility that it may have been the hybrid offspring of a dog and a coyote or a dog and a wolf. And after the testing was complete and they reviewed the scientific and circumstantial evidence, they still weren't able to make a definitive determination as to what type of canine attacked Mrs. Hamilton. Rumors spread on social media of what the animal could be. Some mentioned coyotes, red wolves, and pit bulls, while others brought up the dog man. One person said that it was a black panther and that their neighbor saw a big black animal run by them. They also had data to show that two days prior, the nearest red wolf was four miles away at the time. And as for hybrids, the red wolf bears a close relation to coyotes and the two have been known to interbreed. The possibility that a big cat might have been responsible for the attack also came up. Ray Hamilton, Mrs. Hamilton's husband, said he had spoken to the medical examiner who performed her autopsy about the possibility that the animal was feline. On the report, she had the cause of death as a dog attack, and she went back and looked at the pictures and said that it actually could be a cat. The wound on Mrs. Hamilton's face had five marks, and she said it could very well be a cougar or a cat of some kind, but there wasn't any evidence that indicated a cat was involved in the attack. Officials keep insisting that there aren't any cougars or black panthers in North Carolina, but people keep seeing them. Even some of the investigators said that some of the claw marks appeared to be from a cat. However, panthers rarely attack people. A cougar or a panther probably would have attacked the dogs that were with her. The community just wants to know the kind of animal that they're dealing with, and they want to ensure that no further attacks happen to someone next week or next year.